Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Zendaidukai and the following is about the modes and the options of the generic Flexi script and how you can use them to integrate your controller even more cleverly and configure it more efficiently. Then let's get started. Hey. Oh. Just a moment. Of course, I would appreciate a thumbs up under the video. If you subscribe to the channel, it's the start of a wonderful friendship. And the sun will really shine with a blue sky and beach atmosphere if you share the video in your community or social network. Happy with the greeting from me. Oh, daydreams. In the previous video, I introduced the generic flexi script and the great functions that can be assigned to all kinds of knobs, faders and buttons. But sometimes you need even more flexibility and that's where the concept of modes and options come into play. With the normal settings, each button and knob can be assigned to a function. With a controller with only eight knobs, for example, the possibilities are quickly limited. And the situation is even worse if there are no knobs at all. With the modes and options, it is possible to assign the, for example, eight rotary knobs to, to abstract functions, sort of like an intermediate layer or like a template that can be moved around over different areas and host functionalities can also be changed again with the options. It may sound complicated, but it's really quite simple. I'll just start with the modes step by step. The following entries are summarized in the menu. Eight set values, eight select, one next preview item, one next preview item page. Select track, volume, panorama, device, start browser, browse presets and eight select sense and one select next previous mode. So one thing you quickly notice here is that there are four item definitions and two mode definitions and that the eight appears again and again to set values or select something directly. But it is not yet clear exactly for what. Nevertheless, this is a good starting point for assigning the eight knobs. In most cases, I use the set value function here. This means setting or changing a value. In other words, when I turn the knob, I change a value. Quite logical. And which value this knob changes depends on which item, item page or mode has been selected. This is very easy to understand. As if I were defining a movement with my hand with which I always lower my index finger to the same point. If I place an open book underneath it, I always point to the same word with the same movement. If I move the book a little, I always point to a different word, although I still lowering my index finger in exactly the same way. If I place a pudding underneath, I dip my index finger in a pudding with, a, with exactly the same movement. So the dial is basically my index finger and it simply defines a movement. Everything that changes is actually only what lies underneath or is pushed. And what is pushed underneath are the items the item pages of the selected modes. And of course, you need to know which modes there are. But we've already covered that. There are the modes track, volume, panorama, devices, eight times sent, and the browse mode. These modes can either be selected directly with select and the name of the mode, if your controller has so many buttons, or you can select two buttons with select previous and next mode, or you only have one button and can use it for either only select previous mode or only select next mode as the first mode is started again after the last mode. So the modes nicely go around in circles here, like a jukebox ballerina. With one exception, the browser mode. Let's go through the modes. The track mode has the focus of controlling the tracks or changing the parameters of a tracks. For example, knob one controls the volume fader of the selected track. Knob 2 controls the panorama of the selected track. And knobs 3 to 8 controls the send 1 to 6 of the selected track. Use select item 1 to 8 to select the track directly, as if you were clicking on it with a mouse. Or select next or previous, selects the next or previous track. With select next or previous item page, you select the next eight or previous eight tracks. So 
You jump forward or back or up or down by eight tracks with the track selection. If you have that many tracks, if there are fewer, then you simply jump shorter. That was the track mode. Now the volume mode with a focus on the volume faders. Here you can use the eight rotary knobs to control the volume faders of the eight currently selected tracks. And this simultaneously. The remaining functions are the same as in track mode. With select item 1 to 8, you select a track directly as if you were clicking with, on it with the mouse. Select next or previous, select the next or previous track. With select next or previous item page, you select the next 8 or previous 8 tracks. In other words, you skip forward or back by 8 tracks with the track selection. Now to the panorama mode. You can use the eight rotary knobs to control the respective panorama controls in the eight currently selected tracks simultaneously. The other functions are the same as in track mode. Very simple. Now the sense mode. The same principle again. You can use the eight encoders to control the selected sense simultaneously in the currently selected tracks. So if you select send one with set item or next previous item, you can control send one in each of the eight tracks. If you select send five, For example, you can control all send 5 simultaneously in all 8 tracks. The remaining functions are simply the same as in track mode. I find the device mode particularly great because I use it to control the plugins and devices via the remote controls or remote pages. So something like filter cutoff and resonance or attack and decay or dry wet or with the eight knobs you control the eight remote control buttons of the currently selected remote page of the currently selected device or plugin. With the select item 1 to 8 you can directly call up the remote page 1 to 8. Use next and previous item page to select the next or previous remote page of the current device. Note that they don't go round in circles. You have to go back the long way you came to get here. Use next and previous item to select the next or previous device or plugin. Maybe a little tip here, if your controller allows it. I'm still trying to define a button with which I can open and close the remote pages actually just to open them because it's simply practical if you switch the, to a device with a closed remote page and you can open them simply by pressing a button. You can find this in the selected slot function device device parameters. Now to the browser mode. In browser mode, knobs 1 to 7 select the search filter and uh, knob number 8 switches to the result column. Select next and previous item, select the next or previous tab. Select next item page confirms the current selection and closes the browser like an OK button. Select previous item page cancels the current selection and closes the browser like a cancel button. In the Driven by Moss manual in the generic Flexi chapter, you can read about the modes again under the heading Features of Modes. And I almost forgot the options. The options save the last selected mode when you close and reopen Bitmic. or when you deactivate and reactivate the controller. Or you can simply change the mode directly through this field. Finally, a few tips. As a tip, I would advise you to think about what your workflow looks like. In other words, how you would like to use your controller, or rather how you will use it. That can make a huge difference. 
Despite this brilliant and mega flexible generic flexi script, you probably won't be able to realize everything despite the fact that a lot is possible. So focus on the functions that you actually use and you can remember. If you don't have any knobs but would like to have some, then you can perhaps convert your mod wheel on another MIDI channel into a knob. Many controller keyboards have a quick and easy way to change the MIDI channel. You simply assign your mod wheel to eight other MIDI channels, for example from 2 to 9, and assign the mod wheel to one of the eight item set values in each of these entries. The power tip is that you can assign the options for changing the parameter pages or devices to additional note keys in each of these MIDI channels. For example, in each channel you define the first two black keys C sharp and D sharp from the left for previous and next item page to change the parameter pages. Assign the next two black keys F sharp and G sharp to the previous and next item function in each MIDI channel to change the devices and plugins. And you define the following black button A sharp in each MIDI channel to open and close the parameter pages. Of course, you don't have to assign these additional functions in every MIDI channel, but it's quicker and more convenient this way. Otherwise, you always have to switch back to the MIDI channel to be able to use these functions. With such clever thinking, you can assign functions to even the most limited controller that will amaze even the manufacturer. This is just the beginning. And remember, you save this configuration in a file this means you can create different configurations for different situations, such as live performances, production, arranging, mixing, and so on. And you don't have to use the load function to exchange the configuration file every time. No, you can simply create a separate controller entry for each configuration, for example, one for live performance and one for productions, and select the corresponding configuration file. Then you only need to deactivate the currently activate script and activate the desired script. This works zack zack. But always deactivate first and then activate. Otherwise, Bitwig will remind you with a pop-up that you have done something wrong. But maybe you like pop-ups. I will produce one or two videos about my controllers as an example and show what workflow I have come up with and how I define it. If anything is still unclear, these videos will hopefully make it clear. And you will also be able to download this configuration free of charge. This topic has been on my mind for a while because, as mentioned in the first video, many manufacturers deliver great controllers, but the integration is sometimes really bad. Polished to high gloss, but not in practical use. And if the controller is simply super integrated, then you prefer to use it and then you do automations with it and turn the parameters while playing and get into a much more organic flow than if you have to move the mouse back and forth every time because you can only change one parameter at a time. You can change at least two parameters at the same time with your hands, with a little finger knotting skill, four or even five. And that may open up completely new ways and sounds for you. All this is only possible because Bitwig has decided to make this programming interface available to third party providers. Jürgen Mosgraber has developed this universal and very brilliant generic flexi script, among other things, and you can now customize each of your controllers to suit you and your needs. And now you also understand why it doesn't necessarily have to be in this mega super duper insane blinky blinky doesn't lean knob controller, when a small unimpressive controller is simply mega while integrated and everything is easily at your feet or in your hands. From now on, your fortune lies in your haptics. As always, if you have any great ideas on what other nice mapping tricks there are, keep them coming in the comments. 
you will not only make me happy, but also everyone else who might find a solution to their problem. If we all help each other, everyone is helped. So that's it again. My name is Odo Zendaidekai. Thank you for your time and attention, and I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, say hi to Bitwig. Take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.